Jacqueline, thank you so much for the kind introduction. And I see the pop up and I am responding compliantly to you um, as we speak. I want to welcome everyone to this really first event and particularly under Jacqueline's hands. She's brought an energy to the college and a commitment to connecting with our alums who are our current students and week by week, month by month, uh, year by year, our graduates are becoming you, our alumni, and our connection with you is one of the most important things in our minds, um, particularly at this time. And you know, I, I see some of you on the call and I don't see others just the way my screen is set up. But I would have to begin by saying the alums that are in the community and the clinics and hospital systems now who are taking such fine care of our students on clinical rotations is, is top of mind and has been um, since we, uh, I'll use that word, pivot, um, since we took a quick turn, uh, packed up our bags and left the building on March 17th. It's been quite the run. Uh, I see faculty on the call and they know this more than anyone, what amazing adjustments needed to be um, accomplished in such short order. Uh, when I reflect back to those early weeks, um, I can hardly remember them, to be quite honest. As some of us have shared these conversations with each other, the amount of uh, adeptness to um, have the technology, be ready, and address the needs of the students uh, without skipping a beat was really, really something that our entire college is proud of, I'm especially proud of. And I can tell you, no student left behind. Um, no student did not complete uh, their coursework. And that march has uh, been something that's tired out our faculty a fair bit, I know that. Um, but I want to thank all of the alumni in the community who are our partners and holding our hand on the other side of uh, training our students for all that you have done to support us in our educational mission. That's always been job one, our students, and, and that hasn't changed through COVID. So a lot of adjustments around technology and a lot of silver linings. Despite the enormous effort, there have been such fun discoveries of how we can do things differently, um, sometimes on short notice, but we did virtual graduation in pharmacy. Uh, they were the first, they were on the vanguard because they were March, April, May, it's, uh, it's time to graduate. And we had a virtual graduation thanks to our wonderful marketing and communication team that brought this all together and it hasn't stopped. So when I think of those early days, we're now veterans compared to then. I think we're a well-oiled machine in terms of our technical instruction to students. Although of course, um, I'd be the first to admit those students are getting a little bit tired of the distance as well. But again, a shout out to the creativity of the college and our wonderful leaders who have found fresh ways to be connected. I want to reflect too and make sure the alumni appreciate this, that their faculty, their old faculty, uh, seasoned faculty, I shouldn't use the word old faculty, um, but the faculty did amazing things in those early days. Our um, pharmacy faculty were in the labs um, developing hand sanitizer to deliver to the front lines. We had pharmacy students who were involved in fundraising, who were involved in face shield production. We had, um, we had a, a, a Chinese um, con contingent of Chinese faculty who mobilized across Michigan to fundraise in the tens and thousands of dollars to purchase more hand sanitizer and get those resources immediately to the front lines. In the labs, there were a lot of adjustments made too. And unfortunately, in the research realm, we still have researchers who are not out there 
doing what they do well in terms of research in the community and the clinic. We have scientists at the bench in the college in phase one and phase two research at the bench. PPE, social distance, um, and accomplishing very many good things. But we're still lagging and we've got young faculty who are chafing at the bit uh, to get out there and return to work. Um, but on the in-class instructional side, um, I've been very, very, very impressed with the work and commitment of the faculty. I want to say as well, many ordinary things have continued despite all of the adjustments. And uh, just as one quick example of that, in the world of assessment, this may not seem like an exciting dimension of our everyday lives, but one reason that our students are so successful when they graduate from this college and their programs and they, they are hired out there is because of their exemplary, exemplary training. And a part of that is very careful thought in the curriculum to measure what is being taught and what is being learned. And later today, Wayne State University, including our college, is being recognized nationally for the effort that has gone into that measurement of student learning. And we know from our amazing alumni um, that everyone out there wants to hire you because you are well-trained and you're providing such wonderful pharmaceutical and health science clinical contributions and research. So we're enormously proud of you. So much has changed um, over the weeks and months since the middle of March. Now um, we're looking forward to the holidays and a little bit of a breath so our faculty can recharge, but we will be looking forward to January uh, with a lot of optimism, I would say. Um, we've learned how to do it uh, in terms of instruction. We're watching the moving field in terms of rising clinical cases. So we're very, very alert and um, prepared to adjust to changing clinical situations. And in our programs, I would say that in physical therapy, pathology assistance and physician assistance, we may have some delays in clinical training if our sites are not able to continue to support us, but they've been amazing so far. And uh, we look forward to uh, hopefully strong times through the winter semester. We will be remote through January into spring. We have our fingers crossed that come May, we may have students crossing the stage and graduating live. We don't know for sure. It's, there's a chance that could still be virtual. But I think looking forward, one of the most exciting things of all is the scientific promise of the vaccines that are coming. Uh, it's been a few weeks ago now that Peter Frady and I turned to Dr. Lou Parati and said, thank you pharmacy for your exceptional efforts. And I mean it locally, but of course, professionally and na nationally, we wouldn't be where we were, where we are, excuse me, without that amazing profession who's bringing some light to the end of this tunnel. So I'm expecting to learn soon across campus how our college in particular may be involved in early rollout of that vaccine. Of course, pharmacies are a point of contact for dissemination of vaccines, but who better to help out than pharmacy students and health science students? So it's been challenging, um, but I couldn't say, we, we couldn't have a better team to approach this challenge. And it's a pleasure working with my two associate deans, Peter and Rich, be lost without you, and our most exceptional uh, college team. So I will pause there, uh, Jacqueline, if that's fine. I know that uh, Rich and Peter um, hear stories pretty much every day about all of the activities that continue despite COVID. Um, and there are so many highlights in our building with respect to research, um, with respect to clinical contributions, and even community service. 
So I will step back and turn things over to them to share a few more exciting pieces of news from the specific programs. Thank you. Dr. Freedy, would you like to say a few words now? Absolutely, absolutely, sure. and welcome yes. everybody. It's certainly a pleasure to be here, and um, uh, certainly it's been a pleasure to serve as the Associate Dean for Health Sciences. And, and Kathy, I couldn't agree more. I mean, we have a wonderful team of you leading it as well. Uh, the collaboration between uh, pharmacy and certainly health sciences has gone a long way to make this a, a much better situation than it could have been. I must tell you, uh, back in March, it was very difficult for all of us because we had to reverse gears and change our teaching modalities. I'm gonna tell you that I couldn't uh, do this by myself. And I really wanna do a reach out and recognize my, the uh, members of my team, my leadership team, who've done an exceptional job. And, I'm, and I, I sincerely mean that. So for our alumni who are not familiar with our leadership in the health sciences, uh, let me tell you, uh, I'll give you a listing of the names here. Uh, Sarah Maher is the chair of healthcare sciences. And she, along with Mark Evely, who's the chair of applied health sciences and also the program director for the mortuary science program, have really been fundamental in bringing this all together and working with our faculty and our program directors. And I want to do a, give a special thanks to our program directors who have, have certainly withstand a lot of challenges and have been very resilient. Yes, I clap my hands as well on that one. So I'm going to start with Christina Reed, who's program director for the physical therapy program, Doreen Head for the occupational therapy program, Prudential Worth for the nurse anesthesia program, Vera Lucia Kramer for the pathologist assistant program, Sarah Borland for radiologic technology, Janetta Greer for radiation therapy technology, Karen Apolloni for clinical laboratory science, and Mary Pilot for the physician assistant studies. Now, as I said, this last semester has been really challenging because everything we worked on in the summertime was rolling out into the fall. And so the one thing that comes to mind, have any of our programs been disadvantaged? And what about performance indicators? And how do we stand right now? So let me give you sort of a uh, breakdown along those lines. And I'm so proud to say that really, if, if you look at one aspect of performance indicators, uh, is the ongoing extraordinary program performance in terms of number one, high external credential examination pass rates, overall in excess of 95%. Very, very low attrition rates from students leaving our program. One thing when I send out a survey among our program directors, what are you most proud of? They come back in big numbers saying a 100% employment rate within weeks of graduation. And what I look at is so what how about our products? What do our employers think? High marks of satisfaction, wonderful remarks about our graduates. And certainly our graduates are also uh, very positive about our programs and the experience that they have here as well. Now, reflective of that as well as our accrediting agencies. And let me tell you, they're very rigorous in what they demand of our programs and especially our program directors. And so I'm very proud to say that our long-term specialized accreditation awards are in the area of five to 10 years with all of our programs, which is very high. It doesn't mean we don't have to worry about site visitation, if you will, for reaccreditation. But the bottom line is they award these high, uh, shall I say, numbers of years. And I'm so very, very proud of that because I can remember being the old kid on the block and probably the oldest kid here. Um, that I can remember when it was a year to year and they'd have site visits and specialized visitation. And, and by the way, we've gotten around that very nicely. So let me do something here and give you some of the sampling of activities that I find very, very interesting and useful. And here's one example. The faculty of our PT program provided what's called pivoting during pandemic virtual presentation just to get everybody involved, our faculty, so we can get used to the new norm as we have it in teaching. And remember, 
In our courses, we've had to change the format and platforms of those courses we had to teach. And we had to have special accommodation for hands-on courses. So this is very stressful. And I have to tell you, our faculty and the leadership in the health sciences area went through an awful lot, but they brought it all together. And if I can give one term that would be reflective of all of them, it would be resilience. And they were very resilient here, but they're very creative as well. And if you go on our website, if you go on the college's website, you'll see some of these presentations of what I'm referring to in this item. The other thing that I'm very imp impressed with is both the physical therapy, the occupational therapy, and yes, even the nurse anesthesia program had an opportunity and did indeed publish an annual e-newsletter. And I'm very proud to say that the PAS program is now slated, if all goes well, I know Michelle, I saw a little email pop up right there, is about to really publish theirs in January of 2021. So I, we spoke with Mary earlier today and uh, she sort of gave me eyes up, but I can tell you it will come about and I'm very happy about that. Another item that I'm very impressed with is the ongoing community service uh, via virtual presentations by alumni and faculty and, and I'm going to single out in particular the Mortuary Science Program. I remember they uh, gave a presentation on the impact of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic to funeral uh, directors. I think that was very well received and so well uh, done and performed for everybody. And in addition to that, the physical therapy program as well. And I'm going to do a shout out to Roche and the fine job that he did as well. And these in-services are always well and always welcome all the way around. Um, I was quickly reminded about a pride point from Sarah Maher earlier on. And she said, Peter, don't forget to recognize how many of our graduates are on the front line of COVID-19 caring for patients. And if we reach out and we talk to Michelle Strunge, she'll be able to provide us with some of the pictures that show really the, uh, the, our front line graduates helping patients on vents. Yes, we are making a difference in the community. And that to me is a great deal of pride. And I'm, I promise I won't get too emotional, but it means a lot to me when I see something like this occurring and I see our graduates and yes, some of our students as well. I wanna give a couple of recognition points and there's so many, but I have to pick out a couple of them here. And really, I'm gonna start with two of our doctor of physical therapy students who were honored with the Mary Free Bed Minority Scholarship, recognizing their commitment to serving diverse populations. That means a lot to us right now at this time. One of our radiation therapy technology students earned a scholarship uh, from the Michigan Society of Radiologic Technologists. Now we get these in the past, but now as we're building programs, this means so much to us to be able to see uh, currency come forward in the idea of this recognition. Our, one of our faculty members, and I have to say is Sarah Lola. And when I speak to other faculty in the physician assistant program, they love her. Why? Because she does so much, so fast, so quickly, and so proficiently. And she was recognized uh, with a new faculty award for professional excellence from the PA Education Association. And they recognize new faculty members, and those are faculty members within the first three years of service for outstanding performance in delivering quality education. And I have to tell you, Sarah has done quite a job with the physician assistant program. And I'm very, very grateful for her performance. And of course, this recognition as well. Another area that I'm especially proud about is the fact that we have grown in our research presence. And we now have individuals, I'm gonna say 13 of our faculty members who have external funded research and including a percentage of those with NIH funding. And this is great. This is something we haven't seen in the past. Now I'm going into my 25th year here. And I have to tell you in the beginning, we didn't have much funding in health sciences. And now, and now, this is starting to grow very, very uh, aggressively. So I wanna do a shout out just for those faculty members who have received external funding. And I'm gonna start with Momalik and his area of research is muscle fatigue, 
electromyography, and muscle isometric contraction. Now, ladies and gentlemen, don't ask me what this means, but I can tell you if you talk to Dr. Roche and you'll talk to Dr. Malik, they will give you a great deal of information on this, and certainly they're recognized with funding in this area. The next faculty member is Joseph Roche, and his area is regenerative rehabilitation and muscular dystrophies. That's his primary research. His secondary research is in dysregulated bradykine signaling in COVID-19 respiratory complication. And he's giving lectures on that as well. This is a new area for him and it's being recognized. And I'm so very, very proud of Dr. Roche in there. Nora Fritz, area of research, influence of cognition on mobility and exploring exercise interventions to improve function in individuals with neurologic conditions. Wonderful, very complex, she's very involved, she's done a lot of research and it's certainly being recognized along that way. Preeti Samuel, quality of life of people with developmental disabilities and other chronic health conditions and her focus, autism. Wasim Taraf, minority health and aging. And he certainly has grants in that area as well. My good friend and colleague, Malcolm Cutchin, African-American resilience in surviving cancer. Ladies and gentlemen, he was awarded with a $3.1 million grant in this area. Extremely proud. I don't want to show tears at this point, but my eyes fill with it every time. Malcolm and I go back uh, quite a ways, that's for sure. Heather Fritz, bridging the gap between patients and providers, perceptions of disease and self-management challenges. So you can see it's a very, very difficult area and they're reaching out into the community and getting funding along those lines. Vicki Pardo, treatment interventions for pusher syndrome. And she's also involved with individuals who sustained a stroke using new step. And so her area is neuro rehabilitation. Roseanne Zazo Miller, dementia family caregiving training with a focus on Alzheimer's degree. Hold that thought for a moment because she's teamed up with Frederick Posiak, and his area is ro the role of competence in family caregiving for people with dementia. And he too is now focusing on Alzheimer's and working with Roseanne Donazzo Miller in that area. I'm just gonna just shift down here a little bit and also say Diane Adamo, whose specialty is human sensory motor control system performance. And her focus is on Alzheimer's disease. And she's teaming up with the group as well. So I'm very, very proud of this collective effort, if you will. Sarah Lolar has the Don Pedersen Research Grant examining barriers to research for physician assistant faculty. And something I'm really, really proud about. And this is Vera Lucia Kramer. And she, as you know, took over the uh, pathologist assistant program for me. And she received a grant with a focus on the interdisciplinary teaching of bone pathology and dissection in the laboratory. So needless to say, I'm very, very proud of the funding. And I know time is getting away from us, so I'm gonna wind it really quick. Our, some of our faculty have been active in, in certainly uh, publishing. I'm gonna go back to Nora Fritz, and she's written not only a chapter in the area of neural rehabilitation with a focus on multiple sclerosis in the team in the highly regarded textbook, Physical Rehabilitation, but she's also co-authored a book uh, in, as part of the European Huntington's Disease Network, and we're very proud of that as well. And Mark, hats off to you as well. He's informed me that he's now involved with Funeral Service Law Textbook, something that's sorely needed, and we're very proud of Mark and his efforts and what he's doing as well in that area. So to wind this all down, let me give you some thoughts about the next, uh, next semester or so. And I have to say, I'm thinking right now about a number of factors. But I remember uh, uh, Dean Lysak mentioned something about the new vaccine that may be coming forward. And with that, perhaps we can see now a resumption, if you will, of health science students back into their clinical rotations at hospital sites. And again, we took an impact on that as when the DMC actually uh, indicated that they're going to have to 
really dismiss our students, but expect them back on. And we're really looking forward to that, uh, again, resumption of their education. The launching of the Health Sciences Program individual newsletter, my program on a monthly basis starting in January. This is really top of my list of excitement. And here's something else. And the last item, increased involvement of our alumni with expanding program level growth. We really need each other. If we learned anything during the last six months or so, it's how much we are to each other and how important we are. And so we're gonna be reaching out to alumni. We want your involvement. We appreciate your involvement. And so let me just say this in closing, and from a personal standpoint, from my colleagues, certainly in the Health Sciences Division, we are deeply grateful for our many alumni and friends who support our programs in the Health Sciences. And forget this not, we need you, we appreciate you, and we welcome your interventions in our lives. So thank you again, and, and Jacqueline, I'm gonna turn it back to you, and thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Brady. That's fantastic. Yeah, and there's so many faculty that have done amazing things. I mean, we could sit here for hours and talk about all of them. So thank you for naming just a few, Dr. Brady. Um, Dr. Lucarati, do you want to share a little bit now about the um, pharmacy side of the house and how it's going over there? Be happy to. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm glad to be with you uh, on this. Uh, late afternoon. Um, I guess I'm gonna start, start off a little more uh, philosophical. I, you know, I had written a, a note to uh, um, students and faculty just before Thanksgiving. And I, I guess I, I was, as I was writing it, you know, I, I started to put down that um, this all began, you know, you know so acutely uh, uh, last March. And you know that that was eight months ago, and then eight months doesn't sound like a, a long time, but my gosh, it certainly seems like a long time. It seems like forever that we've been working through this, and perhaps that is somewhat reflective of all of the work that has been put in in terms of um, and a lot of the uh, terminology has been that's been used as resilience, but to me, you know, the, the key word is just the adaptability and, uh, you know, in, in, in adapting to all this, certainly there's an element of resilience, but uh, just a, a huge amount of uh, just creativity that went into turning this all around on a dime, so to speak, and then uh, continuing with that as we moved uh, into the fall. And, um, it, it's really striking just the um, amount of uh, just collegiality and collaboration, not, not only within, uh, you know, the, the college, but uh, it, it really speaks to just the connections that are out there in southeastern Michigan with um, all of the practice sites and, and colleagues that we have out there, many of which are our alumni. And uh, I think that really uh, just helps ring true just the, the, just the strong kind of uh, um, environment there is in terms of Wayne State and just the, the presence out there uh, in the, the whole healthcare uh, area. So um, I just felt uh, that that's my kind of philosophical sort of opening um, certainly in terms of just bringing updates uh, for, the, um, uh, for the group, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, who's on the uh, call, and I'm seeing Zach out there as a, a graduate of the, uh, the last class there, Zach Mueller. You can see him. Hi, Zach. Um, and um, I, if I'm missing somebody else uh, from your class out there, I apologize, but just wanted to make a note in terms of what uh, Kathy brought up before that um, everybody graduated and graduated on time. Um, so remember it was last March and everybody had to make that big pivot, not only in terms of the didactic uh, types of instruction, but 
all of the sites were scrambling in terms of taking care of COVID patients and how are we going to manage students and rotations. And, and again, there was just a, a great deal of cooperation that took place so that the P4 students at that time could finish their rotations and indeed graduate on time. And um, Zach, you might want to note that we did get some recent results relative to the class results on the NAPLEX. And um, your class uh, held its own with the uh, preceding classes that uh, you had uh, you know, over a 94% uh, pass rate, which is more than four points higher than the national average, uh, and uh, basically about three points higher than the state average. So uh, I think Wayne State fared very well in terms of uh, that, nat that NAPLEX uh, score. Uh, just as one indicator. Um, sticking with the, uh, the students, and I think uh, Peter brought this up uh, relative to just the uh, uh, involvement of, of uh, students. Um, we have around 12 or so uh, pharmacy student organizations, and they have continued to remain uh, very active through this uh, in many ways obviously a virtual and when I talk with them their their biggest uh, uh, sort of uh, um, it's a hurdle now but uh, their biggest sort of downside is we can't have our fundraisers we can't have our chili cook-offs we can't have our bake sales we can't have our all of our events uh, in the commons and all of that so they struggle with that but yet they're out there in, in terms of uh, engaging with patients um, you know, I'll just give a couple of uh, shout outs and I'll, I'll bring up this one since uh, uh, Zach, you're, you know, Kappa Psi, but uh, the, uh, the Kappa Psi, uh, I think it was a, the, just this past uh, spring did a, um, um, an educational kind of um, uh, event for the uh, community. And uh, that, for that event, that uh, I think there was three individuals from Kappa Psi that uh, were engaged with that. They actually were awarded um, participation, uh, uh, free tuition in terms of a Harvard, Harvard Business uh, School uh, course that they were able to uh, engage in. Just kind of uh, indicating the level of uh, instruction and contribution that they were providing. Uh, similarly, we've had students who have um, engaged with uh, various community pharmacy uh, organizations. One example is um, um, with uh, Kroger um, this past um, summer, and a shout out to a couple of our alumni and preceptors, uh, Sue Finley and Arie Jalda, uh, who are um, Kroger pharmacists. Uh, and uh, the students that were involved with their, their team of uh, pharmacists out there um, uh, were participating in a, a large COVID testing uh, type of uh, activity. And that's just one example of that. I know CBS did this also with students, and et cetera. So just a couple examples of students still being engaged and out there in the front lines along with all of our pharmacist colleagues that are uh, managing patients uh, out there. Um, the, you know, I, I think it's been uh, uh, good to see just the, the maturing of the students that have uh, taken place, even from um, the, you know, P2s and P3s as they've gone from last winter into the fall and how they've kind of matured with this process. I think there's a little bit of Obviously, no, everybody wants to get back to a three-dimensional kind of <laughs> uh, feeling out there as opposed to this two-dimensional uh, look. Um, but they, they, they seem to be, I don't want to say embracing, but certainly learning from this. And I think there will be a lot of take-home lessons. And one of the things that we're you know, trying to convey is, what, what are we learning from this process? Um, not only as uh, pharmacists who are, are out there, but as students that you're going to take forward and be able to apply uh, down the line. So it's, it's, it's gratifying to see that kind of uh, maturing uh, uh, from our uh, students. Um, 
you know, from a, um, a faculty uh, standpoint, I want to give a uh, um, um, shout out to, I see uh, we have Lynette Moser here, who's chair of the pharmacy practice department. Um, and, um, you know, that department still is going strong with the 30 some uh, faculty. Um, we've had some uh, new hires uh, this uh, past year. Um, and uh, certainly, um, um, you know, that department is doing uh, ex extremely uh, well. Um, George Corcoran, who couldn't be with us uh, this evening, still is chair of the uh, pharmaceutical sciences area. And we've heard a lot about, uh, you know, Kathy mentioned the, our building being uh, open to all of the uh, sort of bench research. And uh, certainly that is uh, uh, continuing. Uh, the, um, you know, this past year, you know, upwards of uh, five million some dollars of uh, research funding. Um, and through this whole process, they, you know, that we're still, they're still submitting uh, grants. And um, a lot of that is, um, you know, NIH uh, funding. Uh, so both departments are contributing quite well in terms of that research area. Along with, uh, you know, that, um, you know, just since May, you know, without listing a, a number of, uh, uh, you know, publications or what have you uh, individually, but there's been uh, just since May of 2020, there's been six publications from the pharmacy practice area that have um, addressed COVID in terms of uh, policies within hospitals, therapeutics, um, so they're, they're actively involved in sort of current events, if you will, uh, along those lines. Um, uh, faculty are engaged at sites. And, uh, you know, one example is uh, um, Amber Lene Martirosov, um, you know, just over the, you know, as we turned into the, the, the COVID uh, this past spring, was able to Basically, um, as ambulatory sites began to treat their patients remotely through the telehealth and what have you, was able to turn that around and incorporate students and, and, and make that, that particular change. And I'm sure there's going to be continued lessons from that that will be um, put forward. But there's an example of a faculty out there, clinical faculty out there in site making those kinds of uh, pivotal uh, kinds of uh, changes. Um, another point that I want to make is um, uh, Susan Davis. Um, she ha has been appointed to um, one of uh, Dr. Fauci's uh, uh, panels, if you will, and this is the NIH COVID-19 treatment guidelines panel. Uh, she's the pharmacist in the country who is a part of that particular panel. So that's certainly a kudos to her and all of her previous contributions and uh, in terms of the areas of infectious disease and antimicrobial types of uh, sur surveillance. Uh, so just to give you a, a flavor for some of the, the involvement of faculty uh, in, in what's going on in terms of COVID, as well as continuing to care for patients um, with all the other chronic diseases and, and uh, what have you that are, that, uh, are still in existence. Um, one of the other things I wanted to, to bring out is, um, you know, we still used, uh, continue to use the, the building in terms of our uh, CPR uh, training. And again, uh, another shout out to uh, Kappa Psi and uh, Daniel Frederick, who really did a yeoman's job of uh, coordinating all that because to, you, you, we couldn't bring people in normally. You had to bring them in, you know, six or eight at a time. They had to be spaced out. All of this kind of uh, technique in terms of that, you know, doing CPR training for uh, 100 P1 students, retraining for 100 P3 students. So all of that was, you know, well orchestrated, again, from a student perspective who uh, really coordinated a lot of that. We conducted all of our immunization training um, um, on site at, at the building. And uh, Dr. Uh, Fava, Joe Fava was uh, 
uh, really a leader in terms of uh, pulling that uh, uh, together uh, for us. Um, one of the other things I wanted to mention, and Kathy kind of brought this up a little bit, is you know we still wanted to uh, continue with some of the recognition, some of the pomp and circumstance, if you will. You know, she mentioned the graduation that we did virtually, and um, carried that forward. You know, we, you know, traditionally we have a white coat ceremony for our P1 students. Well, we couldn't have that live, but a virtual. Uh, event was created and I have to really thank Michelle Strunge for really helping us uh, pull all that uh, together uh, in terms of the uh, the videos the the whole thing that was uh, orchestrated in terms of making that a very nice event Michelle has also been involved uh, or helped very helpful we had to create you know we're doing our farm D interviews so we can't do those in person uh, this fall, so we had to do all those virtually. Well, how do you give a person a, a tour or a look at the building if they can't be there in present? So we put together a nice uh, filming video or uh, uh, tour of the, uh, the building uh, with a variety of people uh, speaking about uh, that. So all of that pomp and circumstance and some of that other stuff that is sort of hidden behind the scenes we're continuing to do and it really takes uh, a group effort to, to really pull all the all of that together um, the um, another virtual you know event and I, I i think this is for the whole college and really kudos to everybody that was involved uh, um, with this was the whole research day that we were able to pull off um, we had our uh, phenomenal uh, outside speaker. Um, everybody uh, turned in their posters, did little narratives for those posters. So all of that was enabled in terms of uh, broadcasting. So we haven't skipped too many beats in terms of trying to, you know, keep up with what we would, would normally do, but just trying to produce it in this uh, sort of virtual uh, wor world. Um, I'm not. I'm going to stop uh, right there. But maybe just. Uh, I had a question the other night. Uh, was on an information session uh, with students who are uh, or students who are um, planning to you know, apply to um, pharmacy. And uh, you know, one of the questions uh, that was posed is, "What's up for the fall? Do you think that we will be at the building? That we'll be out of this?" and um, it, it sort of was a question I hadn't, you know, given much thought of. My my thoughts are really what we're doing in the winter semester, and obviously that's going to be virtual. But you know, given the fact that you know we have this, you know, what seems to be some hope here in terms of the vaccines, uh, the product, you know, in terms of their efficacy, relatively low adverse effect rate at this particular point. Um, given, you know, the fact that the production is there and they're estimating several millions of, you know, individuals going to be tested over each of the subsequent months, I, I had to have a little bit of a bright note that, hey, maybe we will be all together in a three-dimensional world uh, come the fall of uh, 2021. So I'll leave it at that. So great to be with you all tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Lucarati. Yeah, it's wild to think about next fall already. Like we, we still have, we've had a long way to go. We have a long way to go still, but it'll be here soon. Um, thank you, all three of you. Um, a few minutes for questions. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box. You can either write to everyone and I can follow along, or you're welcome to just write them to me. Um, one of the first questions that we had, Dr. Lysak, this will probably be for you, is um, how the Dean search is going or what that might look like over the next year or so. Thanks for the question, Jacqueline. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the process but it can only be a little bit because officially I need to be uh, at a distance from that process because the process is run by the provost and not by me. But I can share this. Um, there, the provost um, uh, has charged the committee 
uh, well, let me back up. Uh, the college elected committee members, the provost added committee members. It's a robust, I think, excellent committee. Um, advertisements went out two months ago or so. Um, applications continue to be open and solicited. So it's in the active search phase. Um, once uh, a set of finalists are identified, then the step becomes more public. So we're in the early phases of the Dean search. And until that time, um, I am together with Peter and Rich in front of the college doing all we can on your behalf. And uh, it's difficult to predict the timing of, for the search. We will, we will let that process uh, roll out and look forward to a strong future um, when that comes. So until then, Peter, Rich and I um, have lots on our hands and we're delighted to continue to be in front of the college supporting our wonderful faculty. Good, fantastic, thank you. Um, we had one question come through that just asked about clinical sites and how clinical sites are looking for students right now and what the future might look like for them. So anyone can answer. You know, let, let us turn it back to Rich for pharmacy and then Peter. Yeah, I, I think we're doing very well in terms of uh, clinical placements for uh, students. As I mentioned before, there's just a, a, a very strong um, collegiality in terms of, um, you know, the, the preceptors out there, the connections with our uh, practice sites, both hospital and community. Um, we continue to uh, engage with them. And, you know, maybe, you know, one example of, of this that, you know, I didn't mention before is, you know, right now, one of the new uh, things that um, uh, is, is beyond planning and uh, um, we're, we're moving ahead with is the um, element of um, in providing an instruction program for pharmacy technicians to actually immunize. And uh, Dr. Fava and uh, Dr. Mosier have been involved with, with this. Um, and already as uh, sort of a start to that, uh, some 300 pharmacy technicians have been trained in the Meyer uh, Corporation across the, the state. Um, and we're working on how we can roll this out in a more um, full uh, program for the rest of the uh, southeastern, particularly southeastern Michigan uh, area. You know, recognizing that, you know, if we have a good vaccine, how can we get people immunized? And we're going to need a very organized approach. Community pharmacies are going to be at the forefront in terms of providing that. So we're reaching out to those, our community pharmacy partners, if you will, and trying to um, create an, or, an organized approach to engaging students in that, but as well recognizing that we need some additional hands out there. And that's why I think this pharmacy technician training is going to be uh, quite important. But uh, um, going back to the question per se, um, we're very um, sort of encouraged with what uh, we have in terms of our clinical sites. And, and uh, I see Dr. Salamitri's on, on the, I see her, pic, her, her photo there, and certainly she's been the leader in terms of assuring that that's uh, taking place. So got to thank her for that. Well, for the health sciences side, let me just uh, blend into what Rich was saying here. Uh, I'm very encouraged uh, on how we're proceeding. Again, we had the bump in the road uh, with the uh, spike in COVIDs and uh, the fact that we had to uh, actually pull back some of our, our students uh, in their clinical years. But I'm saying that if you look at the applications to our programs, and, uh, and again, that's predicated on placements once they get into their second year, it's quite strong. So yes, we're right, Rich, with the, with the vaccine coming forward. This is looking very positive all the way around. 
Uh, like I said, we just got to get through this hurdle we're at right now, and I think the future is going to be very, very bright. Uh, we've sustained things in the past, but we've learned a lot from this, and and certainly from what I hear, what I hear, I'm encouraged with. Good, thank you, Dr. Lysak. Did you want to add something? I didn't want to cut you off. You know, um, for those who haven't been in our building for a long time, you know, I'm seeing Win Schumann on the call, uh, uh, Schmoll. Um, it's different. Um, in the early days, we weren't sure when we could go in and when we couldn't, but our, our systems are really refined now. Students and employees do an online daily screener. When that screener is cleared electronically, you walk away with a QR code, you can print it out on paper, bring your smartphone to the building. You still scan in with your one card, but if you don't have the green light on your smartphone or old school piece of paper, that's where you stop. All of that is being monitored and tracked uh, systematically across campus. Now, in addition, regular COVID testing 19 on campus um, will be available weekly, and we anticipate that continuing into January. It's a measure to keep the campus safe, and it's an ability for the campus to assess more broadly when it may be ready to open up in time uh, once the, the, the numbers of cases recede and vaccine is coming closer. So there's, there's this set of procedures that took a bit of adjustment uh, to get used to, and now they're, they're much more second nature. I have to add too that one of, uh, one of the OT faculty told me this morning, it was the first time she was in her office for months and there was a half inch layer of dust everywhere. And it, it, it felt like she was walking back in time. So there is an oddness to this experience of working remotely. And yet I have to just underscore the teamwork and collegiality and innovation that has come out of it. So in challenging times also comes even more learning. Yeah. Absolutely, Dr. Lysak, thank you. I think that's the perfect place to wrap up this evening. Um, just that these times have been challenging, but they have brought us together, I think, in unique and new ways through creativity and teamwork and just trying new things and failing and trying again. Um, so we really appreciate the three of you joining us tonight um, and then all of our alumni all of our faculty and staff um, we, we appreciate you taking the time to come on and hear a little bit about how our college is managing right now which is well um, and i know that the deans are excited for this next semester and for the vaccines to come and what this next year might hold for us so thank you all for joining tonight we hope that you're all staying safe and healthy um, and we will be in touch. Let us know if you have any questions. I'll stay on for a few minutes. Um, otherwise, we hope you have a nice Thursday evening. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Jacqueline. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Jacqueline. Yes. And thank you, Rich and Peter. Yeah. Glad to be here. Hi, Francine. You want me to? How you doing, Wynn? I can unmute her. How are you, Wynn? How are you? <laughs> nice I've, to been, see you. I've been on a number of Zoom calls. I, I, I like to brag about the fact that there were 136 of us at a faculty <laughs> meeting. <laughs> And uh, very interesting things, but I'd certainly like the opportunity to still stay in touch from Zoom. Uh, yeah. One day I had